Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little project we're going to be working on the shop, actually making a piece of tooling to go with my horizontal milling machine so that I can finish up a job. A little bit of backstory. I've been working on making some bevel gears for my planer restoration, and uh, I've been getting ready to do that job for a while, and uh, last weekend I came out to the shop, went and got my cutter, which is a special bevel gear cutter, uh, to put on an arbor and when I got it to stick over there I realized that the hole inside of this cutter is an inch and a sixteenth in diameter which is really an oddball size for a horizontal milling cutter. Usually it's either one inch or you go up to an inch and an eighth. Uh, I've never seen a cutter with inch and sixteenth and unfortunately these uh, these involute cutters specifically for uh, miter gauges or bevel gears um, are extremely difficult to find. You really, it's very difficult to find new ones being made today. I've got a whole bunch of these in different sizes, but they all are, number one, they're all very old cutters and they all have that same size um, hole in them. So my job today, because I can't find a 50 taper inch and 16th diameter arbor, so we're going to make one, and we're going to be doing that over on the lathe primarily. A little bit of milling will be involved in it as well. But uh, let me uh, zoom in here, kind of show you what's going on, show you what we're our game plan is, and we're going to get over on the metal lathe and start cutting some metal. So this happens to be the last involute cutter I use for anything, and it has got a one-inch hole in it. Again, this one here, all of my bevel gears, one-inch 062 and a half, so inch and a sixteenth. Again, oddball size. These are some really old cutters made by R.M. Clow, C-L-O-U-G-H, out of uh, Meridian, Connecticut. I don't even know how old that cutter is, but I suspect it's really, really old. Very well made, uh, but just an oddball size uh, arbor, which seems to be common from those days back in the early 1900s. For some reason, a lot of their shafting were in sixteenths rather than going in, you know, quarter inches and eight inches. They would be in, you know, one sixteenths, three sixteenths, five sixteenths inch diameters. Never have fully understood why, but that's just the way it is. So this is a typical milling machine arbor. This one happens to be a one inch arbor. It's the one that this cutter would fit on. And it was the arbor that I tried to put this one on and realized that, hey, I have a problem. So my game plan is, is that I've got a uh, end mill holder here. This just has a hole in the end. This is, happens to be inch and a quarter. I'm going to take this shaft here and basically put it in the 50 taper, and we're going to turn this into an arbor that we can mount this cutter on. Now, I could just make a inch and 16th inch shaft the whole way down, uh, which would probably be your first inclination. However, I don't have any bushings that I can put on here. These are just spacers, basically, that slide up on there. They capture the cutter in place. I don't have any that are inch and sixteenth, and I'm really not interested in making a bunch of them. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of, this happens to be a piece of inch and a half stock. It's left over from a, a Babbitt pour. This is actually the, this, the leftover shafting off of the upper wheel on a bandsaw I've been restoring. I use this as a mandrel for pouring babbitt which is why i have some black marks on it no big deal we're going to machine all that off this is a piece of stock i'm going to use i'm going to turn about two inches down the end down to an inch and a quarter so it'll fit up into my holder we're going to leave the inch and a half i may skim it just so it runs perfectly true but we're going to leave the inch and a half diameter up about what did i say five inches i think then I'm going to cut a shoulder in there and we'll make a very small section just wide enough for this cutter to fit on, inch and a sixteenth. And then I'm gonna go back down to a one inch size for the rest, basically from like here out, we'll thread it. That way I can use the, uh, the bushings that I have that are already one inch. I've also got to put a, a, a bearing block in here that, that's inch, one inch. I don't want to have to make all this stuff for an inch and a sixteenth inch arbor. So um, I will do this so that if I ever need to use another one of these uh, bevel gear cutters, I can go grab this arbor and use it, but it'll be pretty much just made for a, you know, a, a cutter about that thick. 
and we're just going to go with that. That is my game plan. I got a little chicken scratch drawing over there of my dimensions, and uh, we're going to go over to the metal lathe now and get started uh, turning out this new arbor. All right, I got my piece of shafting over here in the lathe, and it won't quite fit through the through hole, so it is sticking out just a little bit. I think it's going to be stiff enough. It's not going to matter. Um, I'm going to just start out by get my get lathe in gear here. We're going to start by just uh, facing this end. Next, I'm going to come in here and put a center in the end, and uh, that'll give me some extra support when I start machining that end down there. Got a center in there now. That'll give me plenty of uh, rigidity out here. I'm going to make a mark at two inches. And we're going to turn that down to inch and a quarter. Got about 90 thousandths to take off of there. We'll take 80 off. We'll do it in two passes since that last pass was kind of heavy. I just dialed in about five thou. That would give me a lighter cut, and then uh, that sh should be able to dial in from there and be right on the money. All right, we got four thou to come off. Just going to dial that in. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to turn down just a little bit on this, just so let's clean it up. And what that'll do is give me a surface I can indicate on when I set this shaft up over here later on to make sure it's running true. So still not getting a clean cut all the way around. Let me take a little bit more. I'm just skimming it. There we go. And I want just enough area I got that I can put an indicator on. That's plenty. And we'll break these edges. Let's do a test fit here. All right, that fits good. I'm happy with that. Okay, we're gonna flip this part around now and get ready to do the other side. All right, we're gonna start on this side first by facing it. And put a center drill in this side as well. Got 
got in a four jaw chuck here uh, that I can adjust. You can see we got all the run out in there, but th what's important is as I turn this little section here in the same setup as where I turned that shaft down there. And with the center in the end, we got it supported where we're gonna turn that, all that shaft in there's gonna be turned off. So even if that's not in the perfect center of the shaft, it will be when we get through. Right now, what I wanna do is get all this run out out. So uh, I'm gonna look right here. This is where I've got my biggest uh, amount of um, play. So we're gonna come in here. Let's see, it's go 180 degrees. We got 60 thou. I need to push the shaft in 30 thou in that direction, half of that distance. So I zeroed it out right there. I'm just gonna loosen that jaw up a little bit. We'll flip it around 180 degrees. And again, I wanna take it half of that distance out, 10, 20. Actually, it's um, 40 thou out, not 60 thou. It's reading 60 on the indicator, but I'm going the other direction. So that should be close, but now I've got run out on the other axis. So again, I'll come up here. I'm gonna zero. We'll loosen up this jaw, go 180 degrees, take out half of that. We're 30, so I need to go to about 15. Now we're down, we've only got a couple of thou. We'll do this one first. I'll zero my indicator. Just bump that loose. We only got a, about a thou. We got to adjust out of it. All right. Get this one. So now our run out is about a thou. Let's see, bring the, where's my high spot? About right on this one. I'm just gonna bump that one in a little bit. We got our run out now down to less than half a thou. Probably just gonna live with that. We'll say about a half a thou. That's good though. Let me just tighten all these up. Make sure I didn't move it too much. I think what I'm seeing bouncing around there is just irregularities in that turn shaft. We're, we're within less than a thou. That's gonna be good enough. All right, I'm just gonna touch off here. And we're just gonna take a little bit off the whole shaft just to kind of clean it up. measure in five inches and this is a rough measurement it's nothing precise here all I'm doing is creating a shoulder for that cutter to go up against this diameter on this side is really irrelevant as long as it's larger than inch and a sixteenth which is going to be well above that so now what I want to do is turn this down to inch and a sixteenth and that'll give us that shoulder for that cutter to fit on Better roll. Of 
before when I was turning on the other side, I was getting that little bird's nest of chips. So what I did was I sped up my feed a little bit, making it a little bit faster, and that's helping to break those chips so that we're not getting those long stringy chips like before. Probably gonna leave this a little bit large and go back and finish it all up a little bit later on. But we're about inch 350 roughly. We got almost 300,000 more to come off of there. Taking a total of 100,000, 50,000 each side. Still got about 50,000 to come off of that to get to my final dimension. Right now, I'm just roughing things out. And next thing, what I want to do is we'll leave a little uh, step in there for that cutter. Um, and the rest of that shaft needs to be turned to one inch. And again, I'm just going to rough it right now. We got about 95,000 to come off of there. So, um, again, I'm just going to do about 60 thou. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this shaft cool down because it is hot as a firecracker. And uh, once it cools down, we'll come over here and we'll cut these uh, last little bits down to their proper uh, dimensions and get them in tolerance. All right, I've let this cool down now. You always want to make sure when you're getting making critical measurements that you don't have too much heat in your part because as it uh, cools down, it will shrink. By a very small amount, granted, but uh, when you're shooting for half thousandths and ten thousandths of an inch, it'll make a difference. So I've got, I'm just going to take 20 thou off of that, clean it up, get a good measurement. I'll tell you what else I'm going to do is um, I'm going to slow my, my speed, my feed rate down a little bit. I was going with a really coarse feed rate because we were trying to break those chips, but now I'm shooting more for a good finish. So we're at about 83 thou. We're going to 62 and a half, so I got a, almost 20 thou more to come off. I'm gonna take a 10 thou cut. in here with a micrometer. You get these uh, really accurate measurements, it's better to use a micrometer. We're on 76 and we're going to 62 and a half, about 76 and a half. All right, we're at 67 and a half. We're going to 62 and a half. So I got another five thou to come off of there. And I believe our cutter will fit on that now. Let's do a test fit.
Well, it's a little bit snug. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the inside. There's a little bit of rust in there. Still just a little bit, I don't know, there it goes. That That's actually, I think, gonna be just fine. A little bit stubborn going up on there, but it went up on there. And let me uh, put it back on. What I'm doing here is I'm just marking the shoulder where that goes up on there. I want that to be turned down flush there so that this uh, step is no wider. It's actually a little bit narrower than the cutter itself. Also want to just make sure the back side of that is face down all the way to the root. There we go. And we got about 32 thou to come off of that. I'm gonna touch off on there. We'll take 20 off. We just touched off on there and I went to the end, taking about 20 thou off right now. I'm gonna turn this down to one inch and we'll take that shoulder right past that little magic marker mark that I made on there. I want this uh, to be a little bit narrower than that cutter. Got about 25 more to come off of there. It's like we got about seven thou to come off. So I'm gonna dial that in. And the bushings will tighten up on there and that'll snug that cutter in place. Now what we need to do is down here on the end uh, put a little threaded section where that nut goes up to tighten it on and I think we'll have this new arbor pretty well done. So I've got this set up I think for doing my, my thread and I've relieved an area on this end where the threads will just kind of go into. That's just like the original arbor and I got a little lead in area down here where the nut can kind of get started. This is going to be one inch 14 threads per inch. So I've got my lathe slowed down. I'm going to just touch off here. and feed in some, we'll engage and chase those threads. We'll check my pitch, make sure we're doing 14 threads per inch and we are. So, um, Let's cut them on out of there. That's getting close. We'll see if that'll thread up on there. There we go. A little bit on the stiff side, but it'll be fine. And with that, I think we have this arbor 
at least the lathe work done. I need next step here is I need to cut a key in here for a little piece of key stock. Uh, and the key in my cutter is a little bit on the small side. I'm just going to use an eighth inch keyway, which will fit right up in there. Uh, so I basically just need a little spot right there, eighth inch. Uh, what I want to do here now is get my shaft centered up. So I've got an edge finder in here. Pull the part into it until we find the edge. Might need to go just a little bit deeper. See how it jumped over? That's when you're right on the edge. I'm gonna real slowly move in until that jumps over. Double check that. I've zeroed that on my visual readout. I'm now just gonna go to the other side. We'll drop it down, we'll do the same thing. As soon as it jumps over right there, I've got it edge to edge. So I've got a measurement now on my digital readout that's basically one side to the other. Of course, you got the diameter of the cutter, but in this case, it's not gonna matter because it's the same on both sides. What I wanna do is take half of that number. So you look at digital readout, again, there's my number that uh, measured across there. I wanna use the half function, so I'm just gonna hit the half button right here. I'm gonna select my uh, Y axis, and it basically just divided that number in half. And now, let me just raise this piece back up. I just take that to zero on the digital readout. I'm just dialing in by hand here. Up, oh, went past it. So we're four tenths out there. One thou, four tenths, that's close enough. I'm just gonna zero it in there. I'll lock my table down. So my cutter is now centered on the shaft. I'm just gonna drop it down until it touches. Uh, that should give me a zero. I'm gonna zero out my Z axis on the digital readout. And 52 and a half thousand. I'm gonna go about half of that. This should be about 30,000. So about 17, 19, 20. So we'll just do 25. A small cutter, I'm running high RPMs, and I'm raising my table up really slow. We're at 30 cal, 35, and we're at 40 right there. 50, 55, 60, one, two and a half right there. I will cut me a little short piece of a uh, key stock that will fit right down in that groove. As long as we got it over here in the mill, the other thing I want to do is just mill a little flat spot on the back side of this. And uh, what that will do is it give a place for that set screw to go into without really marring up the surface and preventing that from spinning inside the uh, tool holder that I'll be putting it in. I think we're ready to put all this together. So my custom built arbor will go up into this tool holder like such. You can see I got the set screws in here. 
we will tighten that down on that flat and moved around a little bit but it just got lined up nice and flat on there so that's a little bit longer set screw and grab a, get that one tightened down so should be good there now I took a piece of a uh, key stock here cut it to length kind of rounded those corners off that fits in my slot there my cutter will fit up on here and it fits on there we'll take bushings fill out the rest of the arbor put the nut on the end but uh, I think we have made a custom arbor to fit this really oddball inch and 1 16th inch diameter uh, hole right there but that should allow me to get over there on my milling machine and start playing with cutting those bevel gears, which I'm anxious to do. I'll just go ahead and build this uh, arbor out for you guys. So just take a rag and wipe my 50 taper that goes up in there. Usually like to do the same thing, just make sure there's no trash or anything up inside that spindle. We'll put those in. I'm gonna go around to the back side and tighten up the uh, draw bar. Now we got the arbor installed. I'm gonna go ahead and take, put my key in here we'll take our cutter make sure we got it turning in the correct direction put it up on there get a bush in I probably need another bush in on there put that on this is the bearing that it runs on we'll take our nut put that on the end I'm not going to tighten this up yet until I get my overarm support on to support that just so it doesn't bend that arbor. I'm going to run my overarm supports out. Take the outboard support and uh, slide it up on there. And then just draw the overarms back over that outboard bearing and our arbor is built. Tighten the overarms up where they won't slide in and out. And voila! We should have one very supported cutter ready to start cutting some uh, gear teeth there. Well, there we go. Problem solved. Uh, had needed a custom arbor instead of having to send it out and have someone else build it or trying to find a next impossible to find size arbor with the bushings and the nut and everything else. Hey, we got a machine shop. We'll just make it. That's exactly what we did here. And uh, this should serve the purpose and I will keep this arbor and next time I need to do a bevel envelope cutter uh, because I got again I got a bunch of cutters that are exactly like this they have that same size hole in them now I've got an arbor that I can mount them on uh, and use those uh, cutters for future jobs guys that's gonna be a wrap as always thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already comments are appreciated as are those thumbs up and guys we will catch you on the next video hopefully be making some bevel gears soon